Welcome back to Summer Hill, or if you're new here, I want to welcome you for the first time. Today, I am, I'm excited because Trader Joe's has gotten in all their pumpkins. And I got to thinking that I just like the look of real pumpkins, and I have tons of little pumpkins all around my house. So I'm gonna go through and count all the little white pumpkins and where I wanna put pumpkins, like in that basket right there. I'd like to put some pumpkins in there. And I've already, I've already picked up one of these little pumpkins. They're so cute. Um, they're only 89 cent, so they're very reasonably priced. So I'm gonna go, and I thought you guys might like to come along and join me and we'll go get some pumpkins and bring them back and I'll show you the different places I put them. And I actually have a blog post on decorating with mini pumpkins, with tiny pumpkins. So I'll put a link in the description to that. And then I want, I'm gonna do some block printing, some pretty um, kitchen towels for my kitchen. I like to hang towels to use on the front of my range. Here, I'll take you in there and show you. So I always hang a dish towel right down here on my range. And I've been thinking about making some block print dish towels, especially using the color I have up here on the top of my range, uh, on my range hood. So this is a Dixie Bell color that has a wax over it. So I'm gonna just use the blue color. It won't have that waxy look on it. So I've got two colors I'm working with. Uh, one is a chalk paint blue, which matches my hood. And the other one is a chalk paint neutral, which I wanted to do a neutral color for the fall. So that's the one I'm probably gonna hang up right now. So let's get started working on the block print. Then we will go to Trader Joe's and get some pumpkins and decorate with them. So the first thing I wanted to show you is I played around with these blocks last night. So these are the blocks here and look how beautiful they are. They look like they're hand cut. Um, very beautiful. I've already tested this one. This one hasn't been tested, but these have. And as you can see here, it turned out beautiful. Here's where I started, down here. And you can tell I'm really trying to figure out the art of it. But by the time I got up here, I got better at it. These are darker, and then you'll see a lighter, and then a darker, and then a lighter. And what I did was I stamped, I, I put the paint on the stamp and did this one. Then I stamped another one without reapplying the paint to kind of get that effect of lighter, darker. And I really think it turned out pretty. So now I am gonna, I'm gonna go and iron this material and tell you a little bit about it. I wanted to show you um, what I'm using. So this is the Dixie Bell paint that I used on my range hood with a wax. This is the neutral color I'm using. I found it at Hobby Lobby. Um, it is called Barcelona Beige. And I'm using um, four blocks. I'm using this paisley pattern and then this paisley flower pattern. That's the overall. And then I'm using this um, for like a line. And, I'm use and I did use this, but I think I think I'm gonna eliminate one of these. Maybe doing this one, I'm gonna try it. Uh, it didn't come out as clear, but, but I was using a different technique because I was trying out what is the best technique for this. And so I went to Hobby Lobby and I got this, this roller. It's a sponge, it's a hard sponge roller. And, um, I'll see if I can find the label. Okay, so here it is. So it's called Curate and Color Soft Foam Brayer. It's called a brayer. That's the word that we're looking for. <laughs> it's a brayer. Okay, so let's get our freshly pressed um, towel out here and we'll get started doing our next pattern. 
Okay, so this is the glass I used. It's just a piece of glass from a frame, like a picture frame. But let me tell you that these edges will cut you. So please do not, do not rub the edge. Do not touch the edge. You know, if you're going to hold it, put your fingers in the middle and hold it. Um, and just sit it on the counter and don't touch it. <laughs> okay, so I like to shake up my paint really good before I begin. So this one's done. So now I'm going to these next. And again, since I'm starting with a fresh new one, I'm gonna practice on this. Okay, so what I do is I, I'll go and, and I'll make sure I angle it the same every time. Remember, I'll do one dark and then one light. This one, it's getting clogged up. Can you see it? So I'm gonna go wash it off because, and I also, I diluted the paint. I diluted it um, with just a drop of water because I felt like it was too thick and the thickness seemed to be doing something. All I do is I get a little bit of water here and a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and I just kind of wipe it out like that. Okay, so I got it cleaned out. So let's go back, put some paint on it, and give it another try. finished the brown one for fall and then I wanted to show you a little bit of the blue one next. Okay, so I got this one finished and I really like how it turned out. Before I hang them, I read on Annie Sloan's website to iron this. So I'm going to check that again because I think it was a dry iron and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that this chalk paint doesn't come off on my iron. Um, but she says that that sets it into the fabric and that's important because that helps keep it uh, where it doesn't come off. Before we go iron, I wanted to show you my very first stamp fabric project. These are napkins, dinner napkins, and I used a Courier and Ives rubber stamp to do this with an ink pad. Also, my inspiration came from this piece of fabric, and I also saved a bunch of ideas in my Pinterest, and I'll put a link in the description to that Pinterest board where I saved them. Truth be told, I'm a little nervous about ironing this. Um, she said to iron it on medium, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to run this over on medium. It looks good. It's getting late in the day. There's a lot of shadows. Okay, it's not coming off on my iron. That was what I was worried about. Oh, it definitely, it smoothed it out. So I can't wait to wash and dry these because I think it's just going to make it softer and I think it's going to give it more of that vintage look I'm going for. Let's look at this one. It turned out really pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? You can see up here how the pattern was turning. I had to clean it, remember? So the pattern was definitely clearer here than it was here. So this one taught me that you've got to clean that block about every six or 10 times, um, depending upon your paint, I would guess. I love the naturalness, the imperfections, the homemade look. I just love that. 
It makes it so special. So let's go put them in my kitchen. Let's head to Trader Joe's and pick up the mini pumpkins. Before I left, I counted 25 little pumpkins that we need to pick up at the grocery store. One of the things I love about Trader Joe's are these cinnamon scented brooms. They're great for decorating and they smell so good. And they always have a lot of pretty mums, different sizes like these bigger ones, and then over here, they have some smaller ones. But probably my favorite little Halloween thing this year are these succulents. Aren't they adorable? Okay, now to the area where all the pumpkins are. They have a whole section of mini pumpkins, or they call them baby boos. I love they have different colors, but I'm particularly looking for white. Okay, so maybe I might need a couple of these too. If you're in Trader Joe's, always check the soaps and lotions because they usually have fall stuff there and their candles are great also. Trader Joe's a couple of days ago. So now all we have to do is walk around and I'm going to carry this basket with me and put everything out. But before I do that, I wanted to pull out this um, pumpkin spice Roy Boss herbal blend. And my good friend who lives in Australia, she's the one that introduced me to Roy Boss tea. And I have loved it ever since. So, um, I'm going to try this pumpkin one and let you guys know how it is. And then I picked up one of the pumpkin candles, pumpkin vanilla, I'm sorry, vanilla pumpkin. <laughs> so, we're going to try it. And, and then last, I got this apple cider. We're going to put it here in the kitchen. Let's head to the living room. Actually, you know what? Let's start right here because I've got this basket on the wall that I want to use. So when I went thrifting from Florida to Maine, up in Maine, I found this garlic basket. And I thought, how pretty would this be put out with um, garlic and onions and things? But here's the problem. I don't eat onions, and I seldom eat garlic. So I've decided I'm going to use this beautifully shaped basket to put holiday fruit in like pumpkins. So I'm just going to put about that many for now. And then what we have left over, we'll put them all in here. Another place I thought one of these mini pumpkins would be cute at is over here on my hutch. I actually already had this one here, but I wanted to show you again so you could see how I displayed it. So all I'm gonna do is sit it right here so it completes a three level ensemble. So you have something tall and then a little bit lower and a little bit lower. And then since I'm gonna be having some of my pumpkin Roy Boss tea, I'm gonna borrow this from my fall set and we'll test it out in here. 
All right, now we're gonna go into the living room by the coffee table. So I definitely needed more pumpkins for this bowl. I used, I even painted some to make this work and I used a little bit of tissue paper to keep, keep it up so you couldn't tell that there wasn't enough pumpkins. So I found this little dough bowl at Goodwill. It was in bad shape. I mean, it, it didn't smell good, but it had this branding on the bottom and I had a feeling that it was something special. So let's put all these little pumpkins in here. Good. Okay, so the next place I want to put some pumpkins is over here <laughs> on my bookcases and that dough ball right there. So let's head over there and we will put these pumpkins up there. And this is a great centerpiece idea, super easy. You just need some fall greenery and some pumpkins and you can easily have a centerpiece and it can stay out all season long. It's fun to kind of just pretend like you've thrown them in and put them very unorganized. <laughs> I keep getting the, the fake ones. <laughs> okay, I think that's probably enough. So, we'll head over to this bookcase and I'll show you what I'm doing over there. On this bookcase, I had two and they were different sizes. So I'm gonna see if I can find one that's a little bit bigger than the other and put them here. Okay, so I have this cinnamon broom and I'm trying to decide what to do with it. And I think we're probably going to use this during Halloween more so than I will now, but it smells so good. I'm thinking, where can I put it? Um, I mean, the logical place would be to hang it on a hook somewhere. Wouldn't it be so cute, like in my laundry room and you get this nice smell when you walk in, but then it's not out where people can, can smell it. So what do you think? Where should I put this? Share with me in the comments where you think I should put it. And on the next video, if I have any suggestions, I'll try them out there. Another fun place you can just set one cute little pumpkin is in your entryway with all your decorations. Another place I put one pumpkin is on my little cutting board here in my kitchen. And I also put one of these little ghosts I made. I'm gonna share how to make those with air dry clay in another post. Okay, the last place I decided to put the pumpkins was over here in my fruit bowl. So sometimes when the fruit bowl is down to the last few things, um, it starts to look a little sparse and not as pretty. So I can put the rest of the pumpkins in there and it'll dress it up for when the fruit bowl gets slim. <laughs> So now that we have all the little pumpkins in place, I thought you might like to go around and let's take a tour and I'll show you all of them together. I decided for now that I was going to open up this cinnamon broom and I'm going to leave it in my basket.
it over in my kitchen rocking chair room and that way it'll make it smell really good in here. And then we'll make that tea and test it out. Oh, and we'll place the other items like, oh, that smells good. Oh, it might even be cute right here. What if I hung it on here? How cute is that? But that looks cute. I kind of like the, I like the little rustic broom on here. It adds a little fall charm. Now, while that's heating up, it'll take a few minutes. Let's go ahead and put the fall scented hand soap in my container here in the kitchen. I discovered it's a foaming soap, so it stays in the bottle. So it's too hot to put these mums outside right now. So I definitely think he would be cute sitting over here. So I thought a fun place for the candle would be right here because this is where I like to have tea or, you know, have a snack in the middle of the day. So let's light it and see if it smells as good as I think it will. Okay, so while this is getting started, well, let's go over and let's make our tea. And so one of my bats just fell over there and Kit is going to investigate. Oh, <laughs> he's gonna play with it. That bat we call Dracula because he hangs upside down and he's forever falling. We can't seem to keep him up there. Oh, it smells so good. Kit wants to go outside, so let's let him out so he can explore the wild, wild west. I mean, world. <laughs> Come on, Kit, let's go outside. Come on, we gotta go this way. Come on, buddy. Here he goes. smell this now. It's, it has a different smell than this. Definitely pumpkin. You can also, you get a hint of vanilla. It's perfect. I love this. Anyways, I really like the candle. So let's try this tea. It's super hot and I've not put anything in it. I hope I don't burn myself. Mmm, very fresh. It tastes very nice. It's not overwhelmingly strong. It's subtle, and I like that. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. I hope you have been inspired to try the ancient art form of block printing. Some things I didn't tell you during the video was during my research, I discovered that it originated in China. And I have a deep, more detailed blog post that I will link in the description that will tell you more details into how to do it. So watch the video, read the blog post before you try it if you've never tried it. And I also hope you enjoyed going to Trader Joe's with me and shopping for some of their fall items and using them to decorate my home. Again, I thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and happy fall. I'll see you soon. Bye!